if you were going the, the right way because you didn't know if it was coming or going kind of thing but on here with the chevrons it's a uh, really nice indicator so i'll uh, skip here so yeah um i'm going to on, on purpose i decided to uh, miss the turn in here just to, to see what it did um i've actually found the rerouting on this really good and almost instant um, I remember on the Garmin, it could take, you could literally have sometimes even gone like 1K or something, and it's like, oh, it's finally rerouted you, or it sent you a wrong way, or just typically it just says, do a U-turn, do a U-turn, do a U-turn, and it's like, oh, I don't want to do a U-turn, I want you to reroute me, but you can see that it's, even though it's not doing the cues at the moment for whatever reason, uh, it's responded that I haven't uh, gone on it, and now I'm back on the route, you can see that the chevrons have came back on. Uh, which is obviously uh, showing that I'm back and I wasn't sure if it was using a red to reroute me but you couldn't really see it because of the orange so that the Strava segment has kind of confused confused that on this um, so yeah it's a little uh, little confusing there um, and yeah I just basically follow it along here so yeah, on this on this part, um, I figured that I would take a uh, right turn, and uh, I'm not sure if it's because audio uh, the cues weren't working for whatever reason on this particular um, particular bit. It could be because the screen recorder's on and it's it's um, you know using like extra stress on it or something, or I don't know. It just figured because I was making a YouTube video, it won't work. But I've not had any issues so far. Um, but yeah, I basically figured that I would uh, turn the wrong way and see what happened. And <clears throat> you can see that it responded um, by me, uh, by obviously showing me off route, essentially. Um, so then I, I just make a U-turn back here. Yeah, and then I, um, <clears throat> I get back onto the route, and then as soon as, as soon as I do, you can see that it's uh, the chevrons have came back. Um, and it's also obviously warning me about the upcoming segment, but um, this this map uh, this map field you can actually have four customizable uh, data fields. Um, so I've just got power and distance turn. Although I think I might change the distance turn because with the audio cues and stuff um, and that swipe up menu, which always tells you when the turn is and how many meters it is and whatever. Um, Plus, typically you get a piece that that stays. So I think I will remove that um, distance turn off because it's it's really not needed. Um, so I'll probably put like heart rate or speed or you know something like that on there just just so it's better. But that's basically it. Um, just just a quick uh, first navigation just to give you an idea. Okay, so you've seen the in-depth first look now. Uh, that's obviously my initial thoughts and experience and uh you know kind of going over the hammerhead crew too uh you can see my um on on ride navigation um which it, it, it didn't every everything didn't go right for that um the only thing that i can think about is the on-screen recorder uh, it may may have taken up some extra processing power or something. I don't know. But so far in the, I think it's either three, four, five, five uh, routes that I've completed so far, I've had zero issues with uh, with queues, with navigation, anything like that. It's been absolutely perfect, which is, to be honest, more than I can say for any device that I've owned before. The Garm, both Garmin's 810, 820. Um, yeah, it, it, they they would be, you know, if, if you missed a turn, they would take like six hours to like reroute and they'd be saying you turn, you turn and, you, you know, stupid things like that. Or or you wouldn't even know, you wouldn't even know. Like it would forget to tell you, it would just stop telling you things like that. So apart from that issue that, that like I said, with the cues, it's been flawless. Um, one, one thing that I am concerned about, however, is battery life. Um, so far, um, yesterday I did a, uh, no, sorry, the day before yesterday, I did a four hour ride. Um, and then the day after 
I did a three hour ride. Now, obviously that's actual ride time, not total time. So the screen is on for maybe, uh, there was a lot of traffic lights. So the screen was on for maybe more like four and a half hours uh, on two days ago. And then yesterday, maybe it's on for more like three hours, 15. Um, something like that, maybe three hours, 20. So uh, what's that? Almost, almost eight hours of screen time, um, which yes, is okay. And it got down to, what did it get down to? I think it was in the twenties. Um, but however, I am using uh, an app in the background, an audio book player, because it's Android. And if you're interested in this as well, um, DC Rainmaker has a guide. Um, I don't think he has a video. So if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a video showing you the complete process of how to sideload the apps because all I've seen so far is DC Rainmaker and he has a uh, written blog style post guide. Um, if you are interested, let me know in the comments, give this video a like. Uh, if I have enough um, if I have enough kind of requests for it, let's say at least five, uh, I'll definitely make that video. Um, if it's just one person, you know, maybe I put it up and it's going to take some time to make as well. It's not like an easy one uh, to sideload the Android apps. Because again, the Karoo is a Android device. Um, now it's not, it doesn't have the Google Play Store. It's not like, um, it's not like a Samsung phone. Um, you know, where you just go on the Play Store and then download your apps or, you know, like the iPhone where you download your apps, etc. Um, it's more of a process. But you basically plug it into your computer, uh, whether it's a Mac or a PC, you bring up some kind of command prompt, uh, which on the PC is the, the black box and you've got the white writing and it's all like codes and whatever. Um, and then you basically enable USD, USB debugging uh, on the, uh, you, well, you have to go into developer mode. Basically, it's a whole process. But and then you basically download the APK apps, uh, which is basically like the .APK. Uh, so every Android app is a .APK file. So you basically add them on, and then you have to install them through the code, etc. Um, so if you're interested, I can make that. Uh, but it's a very cool feature. I personally like to have audiobooks playing whilst I'm going. So that was obviously using Bluetooth. It's obviously using processing power. So maybe if I don't use that and I just have my phone in my pocket with my Bluetooth headphones in, maybe that saves me some battery. Maybe it's more like town. But like I said, that was around, I think it was around 20%. So we're looking at around eight to 10 hours, but that was with that Bluetooth on. And I was routing a lot of it. And I think... I may have, because it was very sunny, I may have even had the brightness on full um, because it's not like the Garmin screen where you can have, if it's bright out, you can have the brightness off um, because it's like an old-fashioned kind of like Game Boy kind of screen. Uh, it's not like that. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like your phone. So you, the sunlight shines down on your phone and you can't see it if you have the brightness off. Whereas if you have it on, you can see it better. So it's kind of like that, although it's not shiny, it's more matted like a Kindle kind of screen, but it still uses the backlight so you can actually see. Without the backlight, you, you still can't see. It's not like you can hold it into the light. Maybe you can, but, uh, and then of course, sunglasses, they don't help. Luckily, my sunglasses come up to about here, so I can still kind of look down and see it without sunglasses on. But my overall first impressions of the device is great. Um, one thing that I will say is you do, if you want to do proper workouts, at uh, the moment at least, you do need Training Peaks. So I've taken the 14 day free subscription of Training Peaks so I can build my workouts on there and then they get automatically synced over just like they do on Zwift. Um, so that's a really cool feature. Um, but seems silly that they don't have workouts. I mean, even Chris Froome uses this. I'm sure he's happy to pay for training peaks or whatever, but the fact that you uh, you can't make, I mean, so I've heard of people using today's planner. I know a guy, uh, John Maloney, shout out to his channel. He's a really good, uh, really good YouTuber. He's 
pretty new, check out his cycling channel. Uh, I actually put it in my recommended channels. Uh, he's got a really good cycling channel, he seems a really nice guy. Um, he's trying to build his channel up as well. Um, so yeah, he, he uses, uh, fr from what he said, he uses today's plan. Uh, so I think he's had to keep his Garmin 1030 uh, so that he can do the workouts. And then I guess maybe if he knows where he's going and he's just exploring, you know, wanting to enjoy the unit, uh, he does prefer the Karoo from, from what I've, from what he said, uh, not to misquote him. But uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's a gripe there. Um, I haven't seen any kind of uh, take me home or, you know, back to start kind of routing features. It just simply, you go on the map and then you basically go on, on routes. That, that's it. There's no, uh, you, you can touch the map. So you can lay a flag on the map and say, I want to go here. And that's it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, of course, this thing is constantly being updated. People are putting in requests. If you want a feature, get on that Hammerhead Karoo uh, community board, whatever it is, write your request in. If enough people write that request or agree with it, they'll take notice and they'll get on it. I'm assuming this climbing feature that's, that they've just released, people probably saying, oh, I want Climber Pro like on Garmin. And they said, okay, we'll do that. You know, Chris, Chris Froome uses it, he's a climber. Let's let's stick it on, right? Um, but yeah, as as for me, um, like I said, this isn't a full review because I've barely used the unit. Uh, but my just just my initial experiences so far, I've shared with you. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, are you interested in the Hammerhead Crew Two? Is it something that you? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I can see beyond now. So I can see in the future, it's just like when the iPhone got released, um, it seemed okay, right? But it was like the vision that Apple had of the future, like, oh, five years from now or, or whatever, like how it's going to be, not like, oh, what it is now, because it's basically just a shell. And then that shell is going to grow and grow and grow, you know? So that's how I see the Hammerhead Crew. Although it is some a semi semi complete shell at the moment, you know, it's like I said, it's fully usable. It's it's really good, etc. There's just some some tweaks that they can make here and there, some extra features, and the promising constant features. So even for people who own the Hammerhead Crew One, um, they're still getting every single feature. So they're still getting the climb feature that's just came out, even though they've got the first kind of big brick unit that came out. Um, I don't know, I mean, I guess the process and power is not quite as good, um, but they're still getting all the features. So they haven't says, oh, screw you, you bought Hammerhead 1. Um, and then I assume it's gonna be the same when the Hammerhead 3 comes out. I, I don't know how long that will be, but let's say two years time, they bring out the Hammerhead 3, they're not gonna say, oh, screw you, Hammerhead 2 owners. I don't know if they will phase out the Hammerhead 1 then, but even if they do that, that's fair enough. I think after two, product cycles. Um, so yeah, um, I initially I really like the unit. In fact, I love it. <laughs> it's really, I like the mount, although I'm taking some time to get used to it. Um, it's more like a, an eighth of a turn and then a uh, pull really hard, like, and hold on to the cord so that you don't throw it across the room kind of thing. Um, the buttons I'm still getting used to. I've only, I'm still learning new things about it as well. Uh, I've just gotten used to the lap button. Uh, the lap button, if you're on the map screen, it zoom in. Um, and then I think you have to double tap it to access the lap. Uh, if you're on a data screen, it's just one press, which is fine, which I've accidentally pressed it a few times before, um, thinking it was the uh, change screen. Cause you've got two buttons here is change screen, left, change screen, right. And then you've got two buttons here, which is lap or, or zoom on the map screen or um, off or screen off. This button, what does this button do? <laughs> I'm yet to learn. Like I said, this isn't a complete review. So 
anyway, let me know what you think, everyone. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Let me see. Let me know if you want to see more Karoo content. Maybe I can do some guides who tutorials just like I spoke about leave it down in the comments give this video a like if you like this and uh, I hope you enjoy my channel subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you in the next video everyone